welcome to Black Pack Homestead. It is Vlogist Day 11 and part two of our Raising Meat Rabbit series or General Rabbit Care series. I don't really have a great name for it yet. Um, but today we will be talking about housing. infrastructure for your rabbit, um, the different tops, and ways you can choose to raise your meat rabbits. Yep, let's get to it guys. Uh... Alright. Um, first things first, tops of housing. You gotta think about, you know, the different ways you can house a rabbit. Obviously there's the hutch, which is, you know, a cage, a hutch, a colony, or a tractor, like we have our quail tractor, you can do a rabbit tractor. Um, if you choose to do a cage style or hutch style like we have, um, you need to provide each rabbit with at least three square feet of space, floor space, you know, square feet, three square feet, and um, two feet tall. You know, the rabbit needs to be able to stand all the way up and stretch. Of course, our rabbits are larger than most, so they get the big cages. They got special cages for that. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, 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 they are bigger than that, um, than the three square feet that's recommended. Um, why did we choose to raise our rabbits in cages, Chris? <coughs> well... We could have tractored them, but uh, primarily we have a lot of predators in the area. We've had a lot of, uh, you know, domesticated dogs. Cats. And cats. And then your... Bears. We have, <laughs> we, we have bears, we have possums, we have raccoons. We can hear bobcats, though we've never laid eyes on one. So, because of where we live, we chose to have those rabbits up off the ground and in their larger cages. Secure towers they are. Yeah, the iron towers as we as we think the wild rabbits are like, ooh, they're in iron towers. Um, you can also choose to do a colony and a colony, the square footage of that colony depends on how many rabbits you keep. Um, I would love to have my rabbits in a colony on the ground, but here that is just not doable and that grass is biting my rear end or something. So, you know, that basically depends on um, the colony, depends on how many rabbits you keep. And I'd love to be able to do that, but here it would just not work out for us. But when people do colonies, they um, allow their rabbits to give birth in a burrow and they make um, bucket burrows where they dig the burrow for the rabbit and have one bucket as the entrance and then a second bucket as the nesting area. And that's pretty darn cool because um, the rabbits that you raise for meat are actually um, descendants of European rabbits. European rabbits are burrowers, unlike our native wild rabbits here in North America where they do not burrow. They give birth on the ground, they make a little divot and give birth. In fact, I don't even think they can cross over. I think uh, they're a totally different species, I think. I have no idea about that. No clue. But anyway, so that's why we don't have a colony. Now, the next option would be a tractor, and we keep our quail safe in a tractor. We've kept our chickens safe in a tractor. But what I worry about is them digging out, like especially the girls, because the girls are the ones that are going to want to dig and burrow because they want to have babies. And so you can put a cattle panel, hog panel on the bottom to help, you know, stop them from digging out. Um, some people have tried regular cage wire and it mats the grass down and they can't really eat the grass. So, you know, it's just not ideal for us. So in order for us to raise meat rabbits, the way we do it in cages is the safest, best way for us to do it where we live right now. If the Lord sees fit to 
to, you know, give us land, you know, we may totally change it up. But, you know, that just depends on if we ever get more land. Um, so that is the types of housing. And one of the main things about your housing is that you need to make sure that you provide a windbreak. They um, can get chilled really easily. Rabbits can, so they don't need to be like in blasting arctic wind. And um, you also need to make sure you provide shade to them because, you know, especially if you live somewhere like we do and our summers get really hot. And can you imagine wearing a fur coat during yeah. like a 95 degree day? Rabbits, um, rabbits tolerate the heat or tolerate the cold better than they do the heat. Yes, they tolerate cold weather way better than they do yeah. hot weather. Hot weather is really hard on rabbits. Um, and the way we keep our rabbits, you know, out of the wind is we have tarps that create the roof, which keeps them dry, and then the front and back can close, the tarp folds down, and that's the way we, we, we close them off if there's a storm, and things like that. Um, let's see, we talked about predator pressure, wind, shade, tarps, keep them dry. Um, one of the other things is you can pr you need to provide them a place to hide. In the summertime, we don't give them cardboard boxes because we want the airflow for the rabbit. We want them to be able to be in front of their fan. So they don't they they're up off the ground. One side is always totally closed off to them, so they feel pretty safe. Um, in the summer, I just mentioned we we actually hang box fans for the rabbits and they stay on as soon as it's over 70 degrees the fans go up and they stay on all summer until we're our days are under 70 degrees um another thing you can do to help keep your rabbits cool in the summer is give them a two liter um frozen water bottle and um we do that occasionally but really we found that the fans do what needs to be done. We can also give them a ceramic tile, which we also do sometimes, but it just makes a mess. The younger ones poop on it, lay in it, it gets in their fur, it's just not good. So we feel like our fans are pretty adequate. We do supplement our fans with the frozen water bottles when we need to. And just like in the summer, we have fans in the winter. Um, when we close the front and backs of the tarps, when it's going to be below freezing or snowing, we also line the inside of the hallways, the front, the, in the cages, with blankets. Yeah, we give them some insulation. Um, so they have more <coughs> insulation because the wind and can just whip through that hallway, and if it's a cold wind, they're going to get the sniffles, and it's not going to be good. Thus, we give them a little box they can run into. Yes, the cardboard a box. Hideaway cave there. Yes, in the winter, they always have a cardboard box. Where Chris works, they he can get all the cardboard boxes he wants, and so he just brings home copious amounts of cardboard boxes starting in the fall, and then we rip the tape off of them and get them as rabbit safe as possible and then put the boxes in, and if they chew it up, it collapses, they pee in it, it disintegrates, they get a brand new box that day. You know, we keep a box in there for them in the winter, so that's just another layer of protection. Along with bedding, we give them copious amounts of hay to use as bedding to burrow into, and buddy, they do. They love that they deep love bedding. Hay. They burrow into it and play. It is, it's just really sweet. Um, <clears throat> so, the last thing that we need to talk about is the um, manure and the spent hay. Um, you know, part of the infrastructure and housing is the cleanup. You have to clean up after your animals. And um, when the hay that they've not eaten in their cage and it's damp and they've laid on it because you know to get them up off the wire they also use the hay to lay on um to get, you know but uh, we've never had a problem with sore hawks we've never had any foot problems with our rabbits on, we always give on them a little wire. space they can kind of get off of it you know with the the hay that we give them hay on the floor and you know in a little spot and then they get on that um 
but the poop, you know, the hay, once it's been trampled and it's been got damp from the humidity in the air, we um, throw that under the rabbit cage to cover up their poop. That helps keep the smell down. Um, and then after maybe, I guess you do that once a week. Yeah. About once, once a, week. a week, Chris gets one of our swimming pools or and um, rakes up all the hay and poo and we put that in the garden. Um, the hay is excellent mulch for all your gardens. It's already been peed on and probably got some poo remnants, so it's got, you know, some manure and urine already in it. So it's like from great mulch ready for your garden. And then the poop is just great organic material you can't, for your garden. Can't burn anything up with it, guys. You can't. It is considered a cold manure. Yep. And Rabbits only digest about 70% of their food, so there's tons and tons of organic matter to continue to break down to fertilize your garden. And a lot of folks in the homesteading and rabbit, rabbit, homesteading and garden community call rabbit poo black gold for your garden, and it is. I tell you, our garden has has just exploded since we got rabbits. Before we had rabbits. Um, I have to change positions, my back's hurt. Um, before we had rabbits, um, we used our grass clippings and, you know, stuff like that. We definitely put organic matter back in to the garden. Yes, and now you know it's gonna work. Um, we definitely put organic matter back into the garden before we had rabbits, and we grew okay. I'd say it was okay. But since we started using the, the spent hay along with the grass clippings and along with the rabbit manure, I tell you, look at it. It's banging. It's jamming. Um, I, I can't complain. I can't complain about the rabbits. Nope. They're, they're, they're a little harder to take care of than quail. I will say that. But as far as a small homestead animal, they're great. It's a good start. You can keep them in a small space. Um, they breed like rabbits, you know, and as we go further into our series, we'll talk about that, um, breeding and all the other things. So, do you have anything to add, sweetheart? Uh, not really, not that I can think of, but hit the like and subscribe buttons, guys, I appreciate you watching, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you again. Hey, you want to tell them what the cage is constructed out of? All right, setup is uh, pretty easy here, guys. I'm just going to give you a quick run through. Here on the front, we got some one by two wire. Basic flooring has got the smaller wire to it. We have a good supports. It's good to have good supports and up and under there. Nice little grading system for the rabbit poo to fall through. We got everything cut in. The doors, the doors are all finely cut in. Got little spots here for our feeders. Bam. Soon I'll have a waterer on it. You just wait till that happens. And uh, yeah, I took about a, a day or two to construct this thing together with J clips and uh, set on T post. There's nothing that's going to rot on this thing, so it's going to hopefully give us a, a long, long use out of it. It's, it's been a good setup, and uh, yeah, I mean, how can you beat it? The rabbits are a lot of fun, and the poo is fantastic. I mean, it's just good. We tarp this thing. See around the back here. And it's nice and shaded. They get a little bit of sun until about noon time. Actually, a little bit before noon, 11 o'clock. Then after that, the hot evening sun. No hot evening sun. The setup is good. We got each one. They're about three foot by three and a half foot. Uh, we do get them larger for the larger rabbits, you know, because these aren't these little itty bitty kind of hop around the house rabbits. When you think of rabbits, these are like 10, 12 pound rabbit, rabbits. And uh, yeah, it's what they were designed to do. Silver fox is this breed. But they, they're good. They're designed for for what we're doing them for. So, All right, let's check it out one more time. Everything's on T-post, all metal parts. So it took the time to construct it with J-clips. Little feeders in it. Can't beat it. Just can't beat it. What do you think about that, Mr. MacArthur? What do you think about that, buddy? Socks. Look. Oh no. Rabbit what? day.
damage. Rabbit damage. Rabbit damage. Well, them little suckers went to town on it, didn't they? Yep. Little bite Two marks. Paul Robesons and a Dr. White Cheese. Guess what's going to happen to this? It's going to turn It's going to go to our rabbits. It's going to turn into eggs and rabbit. Oh, meat. that too. So I'm going to share it between the rabbits. <laughs> Squash bug. Shoot, I should have killed it. <laughs> Gonna give it to our rabbits and our chickens. So I'm gonna sit them down over here. So All right, happen. cool. Well, thank you for joining us here for Vlogus Day 11 and our series on raising meat rabbits. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Do you have anything to add? Uh, like and subscribe. God bless you guys. And we'll see you here tomorrow on the Black Pack Homestead. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. And bye-bye.